Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up, everybody? It is Friday night in the Queen City. All is well, and I hope that you guys are feeling fantastic. I hope that everyone under the sound of my voice is safe, that you're blessed, and that, you know what, um, that you're in good spirits and have a positive attitude. So welcome to Diva Speaks Relationships. I am your hostess, Angela Portoriel. And again, welcome to the show. What's up? So guys, I got something I want to talk about tonight. And um, because it is a serious conversation, I um, disabled the ability to call into the show because I wanted to get through my show notes without being interrupted or sidetracked. So um, forgive me if, you know, along the way you have some feedback or a comment that you wanted to make and you was not able to do so tonight. But if it is something that you want to add to what I'm about to talk about tonight, you know, I extend the invitation to you. You're always welcome to give me some feedback and to say, hey, Diva, can we circle back around on this topic? Because there's something that I wanted to say, or I feel like my point of view was not represented in that particular episode. So that's that. But let me start off the show like I always do with thanking you for being one of the subscribers to the show. Uh, I hope that you can feel my gratitude and how appreciative I am for you being with me on this journey. I am so grateful. I do not take it for granted because I know, according to the numbers, there are over 750,000 podcasts out there that are available for you to listen to. And you took the time to listen to me. And I'm humbled by that. I am humbled that somebody wanted to listen to something that I had to say. So with that, thank you. Thank you. So let me get through the other stuff. If you haven't had a chance to follow me on social media, you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Diva Speaks, the underscore sign official. You can find me on Facebook. My Facebook handle is the at sign. True Diva Speaks. Now, if you have a particular comment or some feedback that you wanted to share, whether it is, you know, anonymous or you're OK with me reading the email with your name in it, that's fine. You can find me on. Um, well, my email address is Diva Speaks Official at Gmail dot com. Again, my email address is Diva Speaks Official at gmail.com. One last thing. I got a brand new website up, guys. So check it out. If you have the chance, if you're interested, I would love if you would do so. Um, my website address is diva, the dash symbol. Okay. Diva dash speaks dash official.com. Once again, my website address is diva dash speaks dash official.com. Okay, so we got all of that out of the way. So let's talk. Let's talk about something that we really don't like to talk about. And tonight, tonight, my friends, I'm talking to you 100% from a woman's perspective. Now, the guys, they have a voice, but it's not about them tonight. I'm speaking to the women only tonight. Now, if you if you are one of my male listeners and this benefits you or it opens your eyes to some things, that's wonderful. But I just need you to know tonight is not about you. It's about the ladies. Because it takes a woman to understand what another woman is talking about. So, let's get started. Tonight I want to talk about I love them, but they treat me like shit. Yeah, I said it. When loving you 
is hurting me. And you seem like you don't give a fuck about what you're doing to me. I want to talk about that, if that's okay with you. Excuse the language, but this is an adult show. And it is Friday night. I was very intentional with coming on the air. I didn't want any announcements because I know that the language could get a little vulgar. So I wanted to go after hours at night on a Friday. I wanted to talk to the ladies because somebody out there may identify with the content of the show. You know, a lot of times... When we're discussing abuse in relationships, we tend to talk about domestic violence in relationships, right? You know, when when you're somebody's punching bag, when somebody is physically hitting you, beating your ass, giving you black eyes, giving you rib contusions, pushing you around, kicking you, beating on you. We know what that what that is, right? We we can We can identify when someone is being physically abused, whether it's the black eye, the bruises on the body, the scars. Oh, it's so easy to see when somebody is using you as a punching bag. But what about when you're getting abused in other areas? That's not so easily to identify. I'm talking about mentally abusing you, verbally abusing you, emotionally tormenting you. You know, when they're talking to you like you're a piece of shit, when they're opening up their mouth and everything that comes out of their mouth is vile and disrespectful and demeaning and it tears you down. People can't see that. Well, most people can't, you know. The old folk would say, you know, it takes, you know, some of our elders to identify when a woman is being mistreated outside of being physically abused, the old folks can see the signs and the symptoms of when a woman isn't being treated or love right. Some would even dare to say, if you look at a woman and you paying attention to that woman, you can see the pain in her eyes, even though there's a smile on her face, it didn't really reach, reach those lips and there's no light in her eyes. That's what the old folk would say. You know, and it's one thing to be in a relationship and to be in love. And love can be oh so beautiful, right? It could be oh so grand. And, you know, when you're being loved the right way, it can make you glow up and become 10 times the woman that you already are. It has the ability to make you feel like you can fly. It has the ability to give you the ambition and that that second win. But what happens when they don't love you back? At least their actions don't show it. What the fuck do you do when loving this man is holding you hostage? What do you do? Because the only thing the world can see is a smile, a beautiful face, a nice body, a pleasant, classy woman, a woman taking care of her kids, working a career. But you know what's going on. You know what everything you try to do, nothing seems to work. And it almost feels as if it's one-sided. Like, how can I love you this much? And all I ever get on the receiving end is mental, physical, and emotional abuse from you. 
Like, what the hell is wrong with me? Not in, like, what are my flaws? Like, what the hell is wrong with my brain that I am allowing this? But there's that heart again, ladies. When you fall in love with someone... who no longer values you because everything about the way they treat you says run. It's a bad place to be in. So let's talk about some of the signs that you may be experiencing or someone that you know, like me, Someone I know may be experiencing and they haven't really put a label on what they're going through right now. It's like they haven't made the connection that this is that. Mm. You know, let me try to get my words right, right quick. So. The way it was described to me, ladies, check this out. It's almost as if the guy is so fucking cruel to the woman that he becomes a bully in the relationship. Uh. He's no longer a provider and a protector and professing his love. He's just a big ass bully. That's harsh, ain't it? It's real. Some of our sisters are living this, ladies. So I'm going to give you a list of things that I compiled. Now, it's not in any particular order of importance. It's just a list. Everything on it is important. But let's talk about how you can identify that you're being abused in other areas outside of being physically abused. The first one on the list is no signs of affection. They're not affectionate with you. Not unless you initiate it or you bring it to their attention. You know, it's bad when you have to sit and think and wonder, when was the last time such and such said, I love you? When was the last time he hugged me? When was, when was that? Signs of an abuser, according to the experts, they withhold affection from you. And in an, in an effort... to break you down or to groom you into the type of woman who will continue to accept the abuse and other things to come later down the road. So this is their way of controlling you by withholding affection. Any man worth his salt know damn well when when he has not stepped up and been the loving mate that he should have. And if he's withholding affection from you, that's abuse. Especially when he's on the receiving end of you telling him and initiating the love and the sex all the time. Come on now. We grown folks, right? We're going to talk tonight, right? Okay. Number two. You're the only one trying to make things better in this relationship. Now, you are mature enough and intelligent enough to identify what's wrong. 
you mature enough to say, well, these are the areas that this relationship needs improvement in. And I know that I can stand to work on a few things as well. And you are putting forth the effort. But the only thing that this person is doing is sitting back watching you try while criticizing and critiquing you along the way. Now, if that sounds familiar, yeah. That's part of the mental cruelty and emotional abuse that you are on the receiving end of. Number three, your voice is silenced. When you want to talk about things or you want to bring things to his attention or you want to put some things on the table and have a discussion, you're never heard. He's either over talking you, loud talking you, turns it into an argument, disagreeable, not open to conversation, just very disrespectful altogether. It's like you can never be heard. You can never finish a sentence. You can never be right. That's cruel. When your voice is silenced, how can you love me and not hear me? How is that possible? You know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if it bothers us as a woman enough to want to talk about it, it was stored up in our hearts. Number four, your feelings or your concerns, they're always ignored. It's like it goes in one ear and right out the other. Doesn't value you. Do you ever get an apology? Moving on to the next point. Do you ever get an apology or you or are you the one that's always apologizing? Even when they're wrong, they refuse to say, I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, I fucked up. I'm, you know what? I got to do better. No apologies ever. You're the one that's always in the wrong. Really? No. Something's wrong with that. That kind of transitions us into the next point. That's a person or a man that takes no accountability for his actions whatsoever. He's not being held accountable. He doesn't hold himself accountable. And I hate to get religious, but, you know, it is what it is. Any man that knows God should know how to treat a woman, right? So if, if you're not accountable for how you're treating this woman, doesn't it make you wonder like, do you really have a relationship with God? And if you do, what God do you actually have a relationship with? Because the God that we all claim to serve would hold you accountable for how you're treating that woman, right? Even when they're wrong, they take no accountability whatsoever. No apologies, no accountability. It's like you're supposed to accept their sugar, honey, iced tea. How about this point right here? They always talking to you crazy. Just disrespectful, foul, all out the side of their mouth, reckless in their speech, no traces of love or respect in their tone whatsoever. That's verbally abusive. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, how the hell did we get here? What brought us here? How did we arrive here? And how did I allow this to happen. 
Because the last time I checked, I love myself. Hmm. Let's move on. I've kind of talked about this along the way, but they're very disrespectful to you on all levels. But here's an added bonus. They allow others to be disrespectful to you from their family members to their friends. It's like anybody can have free range on disrespecting you. There's that bully in them again because they take pleasure in hurting you. It may sound sick and sadistic, but it is what it is, right? So not only are you disrespecting me in this relationship, but everybody attached to you has the permission to attack and disrespect me. Wow. So at this point, you have to question like, does this person even love me? Because how can you love me and there be no respect? Because at this point, me loving you is only hurting me because I love you and you're treating me like a piece of shit and you're granting permission to your circle to do the same. And it's sometimes you feel helpless because you're torn because you know you deserve better than what you're getting. You know that what you're receiving is not a reflection of God's love for you or God's heart for you, or is damn sure not God's best for you. But damn it. That heart of yours. Wow. So let's move on to the next point. So I wrote down, there's no reciprocity. Kind of goes back to, you know what I'm saying about um, you being the one that's always trying. It's you, 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 you. There not, it's no give and take with your man at this point. He's just sitting back collecting all of your effort, all of your affection and draining you. It's like a withdrawal from a bank account. If you don't make any deposits, at some point, you're going, you're going to have insufficient funds and there is going to be nothing that you can take out of that account ever again. You're going to keep getting rejected because there is nothing else left to give. How is that fair to you? If there's no reciprocity, there's no respect, then there's no love. Not on his end. Not the kind of love that you deserve. So I believe I'm on what, point number 12 or 13, one of those. So how about when there is a disagreement there or, you know, an argument, however you want to box it up and package it up. They're always hitting below the belt. They're not arguing a point to make a point. They're not fighting for the relationship. They're actually fighting you. And they say cruel things to hurt you, to hurt you, to make you shut up, to control you, to break you down. It's never a fair fight. It can never stick to whatever the two of you are disagreeing about. That's mental cruelty, verbal abuse. That man is damaging you. You need to know that. You deserve better than that. You are worthy to receive God's best for you. And any person that treats you like that, they don't deserve you. Now, I can't tell you what to do, but we can point it out. How about they blame everything on you, no matter what it is? It could be a situation at your job. It could be, I don't know, a slight 
encounter at the grocery store with the clerk or a traffic accident, no matter what it is, they have no compassion for whatever you go through. Again, I'm circling back to another point. They blame you for everything, no matter what it is. It's your fault. They have no compassion for you. If you got shot in the foot, well, what did you do to make that guy shoot you in the foot? You must have did something. That kind of person. Isn't that evil? Isn't that evil? Isn't that like beyond what you can actually comprehend when you hear me say it over the mic? Now, I know the example that I just gave you was to the far left, but it happens. It happens. Another point is they lie to you regularly about any and everything. They're going to get a haircut. They didn't go get a haircut. They put gas in the car. They didn't go and put gas in the car. Because the smaller lies lead to bigger lies, which is a bigger issue. Like, what the hell are you lying so much about? And why do you get mad? When your woman fact checks you because what you said 10 minutes ago was not matching up with what you're saying now. Or if whatever happens, we need to talk about what happened the day before. Your story is not the story that you told the other day. A liar. Why are you lying so much? You don't respect me. You don't respect the relationship and you don't value the truth. <laughs> If you don't value the truth, what the hell are you doing in a relationship? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And again, I'm unapologetic. Tonight is all about my ladies. And for some of you men out there who are guilty of some of the things that I'm talking about on tonight's show, shame on you. You don't deserve that woman. You really don't. And if you think you deserve her, you need to do better. And you really Really need to get some help. But I'm, I digress. Let me move on to my, my next point. So we just talked about they lie regularly. You know, because lying leads to cheating. So now you got a person that's cheating on you. And that, that opens up a whole nother can of worms. They're cheating on you. That's just... Uh, I've, just, I've done so many shows on cheating. It's like I really don't want to talk about it no more because I know relationships are way, far more than, you know, infidelity. But I'm going to say this, ladies. I think I, I, um, I had a meme on um, Instagram that says something like this. As it relates to your man cheating, whatever, whatever you have defined for your relationship is cheating. You know, some people only consider cheating to be sexual intercourse. Other people may consider cheating is, you you know, you talking to another female, you know, going out, having a good time, having drinks, phone calls, text messages, you know, sexting, you know, whatever you have established for your relationship as cheating, then that's what it is. OK, so we're going to roll with that. But the day that you have to pick up the phone and call another woman about your man is the day you need to exit the relationship. OK, so I said it. I said I wasn't going to do it. I said I wasn't going to tell you what to do, but you need to consider that because he, if he is stepping outside of the relationship on top of everything else that we have discussed tonight. You know, why do you have to put up with that? You deserve the love that you desire and demand. Nobody should have the right to treat you like that. No one should be comfortable treating you like that, treating you like a piece of shit when you are offering up your heart to this person. Do you understand me? You deserve better than that. So, wrapping it up. Now, I don't know so much about this one. You know, I, this, this is why this one is kind of far down on the list. They never compliment you or it's few far and in between. 
you know, they can they can compliment and find the good in everybody else, every other woman except you. Here you are with your beautiful, gorgeous, fine self. And you probably can't remember the last time your man doted on you. Why? You're putting forth the effort to maintain, right? To be visually appeasing and, you know, and sexually attractive to your man. And this person doesn't even notice that you're there. It's almost as if they have checked out of the relationship, except when it's time to belittle you. Sis, you have some things to think about if this is you. So my last point is everything gets blamed on you from the relationship not working out to finances if the kids are acting up and teachers are calling about the children's behavior it's because you're not a good enough mom if they're paying child support maybe you're not handling the, you know, you're not being a good steward of the finances. Your cooking isn't good enough for them anymore. You don't clean house well enough for them. Maybe you've been accused of not pulling your weight. No matter what it is, the fingers are always pointed in your direction. And you find yourself always apologizing or you're questioning your worth at this point. This person makes you feel worthless, worthless to the point that now you have insecurities that you didn't start out with in the relationship. All can be traced back to this person's treatment of you. So not only are you trying to love a man Who's hurting you, making you feel worthless, tearing you down, not taking accountability for their faults, their mistakes and mess ups, allowing other people to disrespect you, talk about you like a dog. He got everybody all up in his ear about you. But he can't listen to you, right? Anything you tell him your voice is silence, but everybody else is up in his ear. Bop, 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 bop. All of that is abuse. All of it. You need to know that's abuse, sis. So what if he's not hitting on you or leaving you with bruises and marks on your body. He's leaving them on your mind and in your heart emotionally. And sometimes that is even, that's an even, wow. That's far more of an impact than sometimes a black eye. Because those scars you take with you for years, the black eye, the rib contusions, the broken arms, broken bones, that can heal within six to eight six to eight weeks, but you emotionally damage a woman and you tear her down on purpose, intentional with your cruelty. That woman can carry that around like baggage probably for the rest of her life if she's not strong enough to pull through it. How small of a man do you have to be to tear down a woman who has nothing but love to offer you? Being a bully in your relationship to your woman. Mighty big of you. Everything's her fault. Well, if she's that bad, leave her. Since you, you're, the, you're the bigger person, you're the better person, you make no mistakes. You don't see the need to comfort her. 
You have no compassion towards this woman. You're very disrespectful. You invite others <laughs> to disrespect her. She's your punching bag. And you enjoy every minute of it. Ladies, we have to do better. When I got wind of a certain situation, it just broke my heart. And I vowed to do my best to represent the information that was shared with me over the mic as best that I could. And it's a subject that I really haven't talked about before, you know? It's like sometimes you give one person life while they're sucking it out of you. I've said this on my show before on a different topic. You know, ladies, we can't love a man into making him, you know, you can't love him hard enough to make him want to love you back. You can't sext him enough to make him respect you if he doesn't respect you. You can't even pray that mess off of him because God gives all of us free will. He has the right to act however he wants to act. However, there are consequences for his actions. Now the question is, do you value yourself? I value you. Because at the end of the day, at the start of the day and in the middle of the day, I am a woman. I'm a woman. Any man that doesn't see the need to respect you, show affection to you, put in the work and the effort, hold themselves accountable for their mistakes, and their mess up, any man that talks to you crazy, any man that is disrespectful to you, any man that doesn't have a big enough brain <laughs> to express his love for you verbally is a man that does not deserve you. He doesn't deserve you. I'm going to say it again. He doesn't deserve you. You're better than that. And chances are you didn't come this far in your life to be broken down like that. I hope that this show has opened someone's eyes. I hope that if you are under the sound of my my voice and any of this is happening to you, I, find, I pray that you find the courage and the strength to take the steps that you need to take to transition out into something better. It's not easy walking away from a situation and a person that you love. But again, when loving them is hurting you and tearing you down, you have to make you have to make some decisions. That's just the truth. Don't get mad at me. Part of pushing forward is not allowing the abuse to be a dirty little secret. You know, the type of secret that the devil will have you keep almost like and we've talked about this on the show. Kind of like what sexual predators do to their victims. When someone is being like sexually abused as a child, that's like the dirty little secret that they keep. They feel ashamed, like they can't tell anyone because this is happening to them. They're too embarrassed to talk about it. Maybe this is a bad example. Maybe you don't get it. But I, I feel sometimes that when you're being mentally emotionally and verbally abused. You don't want to tell nobody that this is happening to you. Kind of works the same way with, you know, if, if you're a victim of 
domestic violence. It's, it's so embarrassing. You don't want people to know. And if you're a private person, you damn sure don't want people in your business. But you got to find the courage to be able to tell your story to somebody, somebody that can hold your hand and listen to you and let you cry it out and speak some love into your life. To encourage you, to inspire you to want better for yourself because you absolutely deserve at bare minimum to be treated like a human, a woman. You deserve that. I hope you can find the courage to tell your story to someone who has your best interest at heart. If therapy or counseling is available to you, there's no shame in that. Sometimes the best place to talk about things too is with a therapist, someone who doesn't know you, who has no interest in lying to you or telling your business is a private session where they can give you the tools and the resources to be able to cope and make decisions for the rest of your life. I'm no coach, I'm no counselor. I'm just a woman with opinions and who's passionate about relationships. Now, if you have any feedback, remember, you can hit me up, divaspeaksofficial at gmail.com. And if this is you, because I'm going to publish this into an actual podcast episode, because this was like a pop-up podcast edition. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I just want you to be blessed. Better days are coming. You just got to know that. So, guys, um, tell a friend about the show because I lost my train of thought. I forgot what I was going to what I was about to say. Tell a friend about the show. You know, share your favorite episodes. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I, yeah, YouTube as well. Um, I'm pretty much out there. So it is Friday night, um, even though the world is semi-closed, um, fix yourself a cocktail. Relax and unwind, because you got this. You got this. You deserve God's best for you. If you're not being loved properly and loved and treat it the way that you deserve and you desire, again, you got some decisions to make. Disrespect should not be tolerated. An occasional slip up, yeah, we all can overlook that, right? But when it's intentional and it's consistent, that's problematic. We can talk about this a little bit later. I'm pretty sure I'll get some emails. My homegirl's probably going to hit me up. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to be like, I didn't say your name. <laughs> Nobody knows I know you. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for continuing to listen to Diva Speaks Relationships. Enjoy your weekend. And visit the website, diva-speaks-official.com. And until the next time, I love you guys. And the diva has spoken.